Hey guys, yesterday I mentioned in one of my videos uh, chains within Ableton. Um, so today I'm going to do a tutorial uh, going into that with a little bit more depth, okay? Well, I didn't even cover it at all, so I'm going to cover it. Uh, so at the moment what I have is this. Okay, so what that is, that is a uh, the Ableton standard drum kit with an 808. I'm just put pop that in there and I have brought the decay down on the kick so that's just it pure right out of the drum machine with just a little bit of modification modification to the decay um, and this is just a sine wave coming out of operator um, it's just clean nothing's going on and this is what I'm using for my sub bass um, but I want to create some upper harmonics in this bass line because maybe you can't even hear this on your sound system if you don't have studio monitors or if you're not wearing headphones. Um, so let me just show you what this actually looks like with an EQ. So let's grab EQ8 and let's blow it up so we can see spectrum. Cool. Um, you'll notice that there is some upper harmonics in this sine wave, um, but there's not a hell of a lot going on. I mean, if we cut this, you can kind of just hear the clicking of it. We want to create a bit more than that, maybe like a plucking sound. Um, I think that would be really nice. So let's just turn that back off. We'll delete that EQ because we don't need it for now. Okay, so we've got one channel for bass and we've got one channel for kick. And for like simplicity's sake, we don't want to get carried away with having a uh, like a sub bass channel and then creating a new one and du or duplicating it and then calling that top or whatever. You can do it all within just the one channel. So what you would do is you'd click operator, you'd right click and you'd go group. Cool. So this is what we did yesterday with the filters. Um, but now you can see when I click this kind of little list uh, or bullet point looking button, um, it drops down this chain selector. Um, so what this is, is right now we can see that our current patch is sitting in there and it's making the sound and then it's coming out and it's going to master and it's being summed with a kick, etc, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another chain that is simply uh, the pluck or the upper harmonics, sorry, upper frequencies um, that we want sitting on top of this bass line, okay? Because uh, we want our sub punch to be completely signed. Uh, we will probably, for this, all intents and purposes, we're just going to leave it exactly as it is right now um, with zero, dis like zero regard to how good it sounds, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's go ahead and duplicate that, okay? And then let's click the first one. Let's go Control R, and we'll call this sub, okay? And the sub, we're not going to touch this. We're just going to leave it as it is. This one, you'll notice that it's the exact same sub patch. And actually, if we play it together, it's just layering it on top. So it's just increasing the volume because there's now there's two of them. Um, so we'll call this one uh, top, all right? So this is going to be our top frequency. So we're going to mute the bottom for now. We're just going to listen to the top, and we're just going to shape this slightly. This isn't a sound, um, a sound um, design course, so let's just slow down on that a bit. I'm just going to quickly dial in something that's going to sound like a bit like a pluck. Um, so we're going to turn the envelope up, um, and maybe we'll change this wave so that it is a saw wave. Yeah, cool. That's giving us a bit of a, um, and maybe we'll bring it up an octave. Uh, yeah, cool. That's that's really good. Um, all right, so we want cool. All right, well, that's good enough for what we want to do. I'm going to take the reso out because I don't like resonance in my bass lines. Whatever. Um, all right, so first things first is this has uh, low frequency. Uh, content in it and that's going to conflict with our sub so let's go ahead and cut it out so you can see all of this I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, maybe let's just cut it here because there's a bit of a dip here that's got not much going on so I think that's a good place to cut um, so let's just hope that cool it doesn't kill our sound too much that's, that's fine um, all right so let's see how it sounds with the sub okay let's see how it sounds with the kick Cool, we're getting something. So let's turn that upper part off. It's 
definitely adding some interest. You could tweak this until you had it perfect. So that's not what we're here for. Um, cool. All right. So what we could also do is we don't want the sub to be affected by maybe like some kind of stereo effects or um, anything that kind of takes away from the impact of that sub. So what we could do on the top part is we could add some stereo wideness. Um, we could even do it quite interestingly and add a uh, has effect. So let's get a bit carried away because this is what this is about. So we're going to duplicate the top. We're going to send one to the right. We're going to send one to the left. And oh, for that, oh, sorry, I just bumped the mic. Um, for the hell of it, let's do one that's going to be center. So let's go. This is top right, top mid, and top left. Cool. So let's set that back to default. Okay, so we've got a full stereo field. What we're gonna do on the left channel is we're gonna grab a simple delay. I'm gonna chuck that bad boy on there. Let's turn it to time. We're gonna change the right channel right down to 1ms because we don't really want too much going on there. And this channel is gonna go to 25 and you'll be able to hear right now what's happening. Um, but let's go. Cool, all right. Maybe we want these outer channels to be a little bit more subtle. So we'll bring them down a little. And maybe we want all of this to just be a little bit lower. So, oh shit. Maybe you can't do that. Um, so let's bring that down to 10. And that down to five. If you hold control, you get finer adjustments when you do this. And if you have OCD like me, it's gonna help you big time. Okay, so let's turn all of that off. And turn it all back on. Cool, all right, so we've got a pure sub bass that's not losing any of its punch, and then we're adding some interesting um, upper activity. We're widening it in a stereo field, and we're also um, cutting out the low end in it so that it does not conflict with our bass line. And you'll notice each one of them has EQ on. Okay, so now we've got this entire rack that's just doing that one thing. Uh, so let's just collapse everything because we're done with that. What we're going to do is we're going to compress it all together. Um, and uh, we could EQ it as well. Uh, so this is what this is what I would do next. So I'll go ahead and EQ it. Um, and I would cut the bottom out of it. And I'd probably cut it at about 35. Maybe take a little bit of the, um, the muddy frequencies around. 300 hertz out um, and you can maybe even shelf the kind of clicking high stuff if you wanted to have that a little bit more pronounced we'll do that um, so we're going to EQ and then we're going to compress and I'm going to use the glue compressor I'm just going to use some gentle settings um, so we want to trigger it cool see it's being triggered there um, we're not going to make it up unless we were wanting to mix it in properly but the well, I'm just using headphones, so I can't really tell the the balance between the kick and the bass so well. But um, that would have it ready, and I would probably work with that all the way through the track until I finally bounced everything down to audio, and then actually mixed it in properly. And I, that's when I would set the levels between the kick and the bass properly, and, and have it where I wanted it. Um, one last thing that I would probably do is go ahead and grab a compressor. I'd set it up to side chain so that the bass line is ducking whenever the kick is triggered because you don't want the kick frequencies and the bass frequencies to conflict. Um, so I learnt these uh, compression settings off of uh, a artist called Halquist. He did one um, tutorial. Um, he makes like Xenon-esque style um, Psytrance, uh, so real chuggy bass lines. Um, and I watched it and I learned this, uh, these settings off of him because it really helped me understand side chaining a bit better. So your threshold you set depending on the characteristic of how much kind of pump you want. Same with your release. Um, so normally these are the settings that I would use uh, for most bass lines and then I would adjust the threshold to suit what it was that I was doing. Typically for my side trance, uh, it really depends on the BPM as well because this is all kind of reacting um, to the speed of the track, especially your release and whatnot. Uh, but I would probably use uh, the threshold of 
and around 20 for all of that sort of stuff. So um, it nicely controls it. And we've got a nice relationship going on right now between our kick and bass. So that's chains and that's also a little bit of kind of pre-mixing and uh, some sidechain compression. But that's how you get into chains and you can really take that stuff to whatever level you choose because it's really no limits with that sort of stuff. You could also actually put a delay over all of this as well um, and just have it kind of trickling off a little bit. Um, but we won't do it right now. So. That is that video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you again in the next one.